Hey, we're going to Oklahoma City. I don't do a lot of podcasts in Oklahoma City. You know why? Because it's run by a bunch of Republicans based on off of old oil money. And they don't have shenanigans there. They just don't. We've got one today. It's a small shenanigan though. Oklahoma City tickets. The city of Oklahoma City is ticketing a business for trash on city property, an alleyway, a public alleyway that belongs to the homeless population. Yeah. You've got homeless services a couple of blocks away and homeless people take the food and just toss it wherever and live wherever as they do everywhere. This one's in Oklahoma City. Let's talk about it. Let's get into it. Here we go. So I'm going to be actually in Oklahoma City for Thanksgiving and uh, through like four or five days. I'm going to try and check this place out. Where are we talking about? Now, here's Oklahoma City. Downtown is like right in here. This business is right here. Um, My parents live just right up over here. Lake Hefner. Hugh Hefner, named after Hugh Hefner. Oh, not Hugh Hefner? Oh, well, anyway. Okay, here's uh, here's the business, and here's where the Seattle Supersonics play. Uh-huh, the Seattle Supersonics. Yep, I said that. All right. <laughs> Let's watch this video. Let's get into this video. This is a pretty good video. Oklahoma City, who thunk? Here we go. Business owner very frustrated. She says she's being punished for problems being caused by the homeless. News Force Taylor Mitchell has details. New at 6. We're near West Main Street and North Virginia Avenue. Next to me is the building the city says is responsible for all of this mm. trash. However, let me show you what's here. We have empty bottles, clothes, yeah. and much more mm. that would not typically belong to a company that makes signs. <laughs> we no. have to clean up feces off the back of our building mm. all the time. There's needles. Um, it's a safety concern for us. And now we are either forced to approach them or be fined. Taylor Morris with J&B Graphics in Northwest Oklahoma City says they've been dealing with mounds of trash in the neighborhood for years. It has been so bad that she and several other surrounding business owners wrote a letter to city officials asking for help regarding trash and homeless in the area. But they say it fell on deaf ears. We're just struggling trying to get anybody to help us down here. Morris was surprised when someone from the city hand delivered this ticket saying they're responsible for the trash on city property that sits next to their building. And it pretty much was that we have 30 days to clean up all the trash and debris left by the homeless camps in the alleyway. We will not be paying any fine related to that. There you go. Shots fired. Blocking the alley with piles of trash. In the picture, there's bikes, wagons, tents, and much more that Morris says does not belong to her sign company. Even today, the trash on the ground is nothing related to a sign-making business. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is wild down here. It is the wild, wild west. The Oklahoma City Homeless Alliance, sitting just two blocks away from j b Graphics, provided news for with this statement, saying in part, quote, We work with both city code enforcement and county services to address camping and associated trash off our property. Going on to say trash is something we struggle with and are always working to improve. Morris just wondering why they're now responsible for the mess. It's pretty much falling on deaf ears. It's not go- We're not getting anywhere and it's very frustrating for us. In downtown Oklahoma City, Taylor Mitchell, Oklahoma's News 4. The city of Oklahoma mm. City tells News 4, quote, the city emphasizes with the property, empathizes rather with the property owner, but landowners are responsible when illegal dumping takes place on their property. And that maintenance of alleys are the responsi- is the responsibility of property owners. Yeah. You can find the full statement from the Oklahoma City. Yeah. KFOR.com. Yeah. And, and I, I have looked at that. So, yeah. That's a, so this, we are stepping back in time. These are issues that LA, Seattle, Portland dealt with like 30 years ago. As the homeless population started to explode, Oklahoma City, their point in time count, their pit count was like 1,450, 1,460 people total, total. To put that in perspective, city of LA, millions more people, right? Uh, Oklahoma City, I think is 650,000 total. Am I totally off there? Let's just take a quick looky see here. Population of OKC. 687,000. Okay. So, you know, not that much smaller 
than the city of Seattle. But 1,400 homeless people, getting back to L.A., L.A. has 76,600. So these are big issues for the city of Oklahoma, Oklahoma City. Hey, a bunch of homeless people that are camped out there because they're taking advantage of services that are nearby, getting free food, and then they come here and they post up in the alley and do their thing and take a crap and do their drugs, you know, some needles and feces as mentioned, and leave a whole bunch of garbage. One of the main things about the garb, the homeless and the garbage that a lot of these services always bring up is, hey, we're handing out single serving sizes, meaning you got a meal in styrofoam. Do you remember single serving sizes, the uh, reference in Fight Club? Yeah, it's true. All right, got one person, we're going to give them one meal and one styrofoam container. Well, the homeless tend to not put anything in the garbage. They just leave it wherever the F they want because it's not their property and they don't care and they're oftentimes on drugs or they have mental issues. They're not big on garbage. If a garbage can isn't right there, they won't, they won't do anything with it. They just leave it behind. And that's a known quantity. So this business is basically saying, hey, that's a city alleyway behind our business with homeless people that we shouldn't have to be responsible for. But you, the city, are ticketing us. What's up with that? And you can kind of see that pushback that I love about Oklahoma and Oklahoma City. We're not paying that. You know, here in Seattle, people go, oh, I understand homeless, you know, we got to cut them a break and we're going to pay it. You know, we're, we're going to have a little bit of pushback, if any whatsoever. But not in Oklahoma City, because this isn't a thing. I looked at news stories last night. I, that's how I came across this one. I looked for news stories about what is happening with the homeless population in OK City. Because it's a big city. It's almost 700,000 people. You're and it's got some of the most fast rising rents in the United States because it's been so affordable till now, right? And you can still get a great house, rent a great house for like 1500 bucks. Yeah. You know, it's not brand new. And you can get a new house for three, four hundred grand that's really nice. I mean, some affordable stuff relative to Seattle, relative to San Fran, relative to anywhere on the West Coast. So Oklahoma City is literally playing catch up on a very, very tiny scale. You got 1,400 people in the entire OK City regional area. <laughs> That's nothing. You got nothing. But there's still issues that come up, and this is one of them. So uh, we already talked about that. KFOR went to the property on Tuesday and found trash in the alleyway. And you know what? When I'm down in uh, in OK City, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go buy this business and just see what it looks like. And I'm gonna go buy the services area where they're handing out the foods. Um, cause there's a, just a couple of places in Oklahoma that I could find. There's very few homeless stories because they don't really have much of a homeless population. A lot of that has to do with they've had affordable housing, but more importantly, their government officials are like, Hey, yeah, you can't just camp out willy nilly. It's not a thing. You can't do your shenanigans wherever. What kind of help do you need? Do you need some mental health services? Do you need some addiction services? Because if you're not going to take us up on our offer, here's your option. We're going to take you to jail. In areas where they don't have housing for the homeless, they will literally get them a ride to Oklahoma City that has more resources. That's kind of known as the big, the big regional. I know, I think Norman or Sherman um, ships to OK City. So KFOR, this is the media, this is the TV station that this business reached out to, to say, hey, can you help us out here? KFOR went to the property on Tuesday and found trash in the alley with their clothes, empty beer cans, and much more, uh, much more that would likely not belong to a company that make signs. That's pretty clear. You got a bunch of homeless crap, right? I mean, it's standard stuff. Um, you have to clean up feces off the back of our building all the time. There's needles. It's a safety concern for us. And now we're either forced to approach them or be fined, said Taylor Mortis, JMB Graphics. 
This is literally what businesses here 30 years ago were starting to deal with. Now, you know, we're so far down the road on that because in areas where homelessness is a big thing, it's just an all out war in these businesses. You notice we're not talking about the homeless breaking in to these businesses. They're just crapping out back, leaving their garbage. That's the story. Here in Seattle, San Fran, Portland, it's about homeless just overrunning society. And because we've let them, you know, we want to be compassionate towards our fellow human being. Therefore, we're just going to let them shoot up until they kill themselves in a tent on the sidewalk of a busy street in Portland. Yeah, how's that working out? Just read a story that I'm not going to cover, but 45% of pedestrian fatalities in Portland are from the homeless community. Yeah, kind of one more reason. Shouldn't let people live just willy-nilly wherever. Because, you know, might get run over. Horrible. Taylor Morris with JMB Graphics in Northwest Oklahoma City said they've been dealing with mounds of trash in the neighborhood for years. It's been so bad that she and several other surrounding business owners wrote a letter to city manager Craig Freeman, Mayor David Holt, and Councilwoman Joe Beth Heyman for help regarding trash and homelessness in the area. But she says it fell on deaf ears. Well, that's why I think you reach out to a media company and then some podcaster from Seattle visiting his parents for Thanksgiving records a podcast on it, gives a little bit more pushback. You need pushback on this kind of stuff. Because this business shouldn't be responsible for this kind of thing, right? Where's the enforcement? Where's the enforcement on, hey, you know what? You can't really live there. That's a no-go. You certainly can't hand out a ticket. But again, they can because it's against the city ordinance to have a bunch of garbage sitting around. Hey, don't really care where it came from. Clean up your shit. That's what the city is saying. And you know what? You might have seen that back in the day here in Seattle, however many decades ago, before things got wildly out of control. And, you know, this business here, you're talking about it being the Wild West. I'm from Seattle. I'm from Bellevue, suburb of Seattle, but I'm in Seattle proper all the time. That's the Wild West. Ship Canal Bridge encampment, you got a couple hundred people living there. That's the Wild West. This very manageable. But it's because it's in relation to the experience, which is there's not a lot of homeless in Oklahoma City. You don't have a massive epidemic. You've got certain areas where you've got a little bit of this. The other, there was a park to the north and west of this business, I believe, that it was impacted. Um, that was impacted. It's on the south and kind of just west, west side of uh, Hugh Hefner Lake. Sorry, Lake Hefner. Um, and it's always got a homeless issue and people are kind of hiding back in the, in the trees. But literally, if you Google homeless, okay, city, there's not a ton of stories about it. And we talked about some of the factors as to why there isn't a big homeless population. Another one is the weather blazing hot in the summer, cold with those Arctic winds coming across the plains that just bear down on kind of everything in their way. You would not want to be homeless in uh, in Oklahoma City. Wouldn't want to be homeless in Dallas, you know, anywhere in that kind of region. Where was I? Oh, Boston. I was watching a video on homelessness in Boston. So I go on vacation. I go see my parents. Mom, Dad, can you can you drive me to the nearest homeless encampment? I mean, that's what my life has come to. And watching videos on homelessness in in uh, Boston. Man, there was a bunch of snow on the ground. It was minus nine degrees. That's why we've got a massive epidemic here because we've, you know, we've made drugs plentiful legal, got a decent, moderate climate. You know, we'll, we'll hand you a sandwich. We'll hand you a tent. We'll do whatever it takes to make sure that your homeless experience here as a drug addict is, you know, par with San Francisco and par with, with Portland. Whereas in Oklahoma City, they're pushing back and rightfully so. That's the way it should be done because otherwise it gets wildly out of control. I'm telling you, this is the wild down here. It's wild down here. It's the wild, wild west, said Morris. 
So I'm going to go there and see. I'm going to see what does it look like? What is Oklahoma City, a Republican state, Republican city? What does that look like? It'll be interesting. I have looked around um, probably a mile from where the Supersonics play. Yep, I said that again. A mile from where the Oklahoma Thunder plays NBA team to the south and west of their what what's their opacom center uh, arena i think it's called um i i looked at a handful of tents that were in an area but it is so mild compared to what we've got going on here where you've just got absolute lunatics on drugs running around totally different deal wildly different deal so i'm going to go look at that and kind of see just what's going on. KFOR spoke with other business owners in the area who didn't want to go on camera because they don't want to look like the bad guy, but did confirm the homeless population is responsible for the trash. You know, it's pretty obvious. I mean, it's pretty clear, right? You got a bunch of clothes, you got a bunch of decomposing food in containers, got some needles, you know, it's a standard thing. They just, they, they just live a debauched lifestyle, can't pick up their crap, don't have access to garbage oftentimes. And if they do, they're just not in a mental place where they can get that done. We're just struggling trying to get anybody to help us down here, said Morris. Well, I'll come down. I'll do a podcast. Here we are. It's what it takes. Morris said she was surprised when somebody from the city hand delivered her a ticket saying J&B Graphics is responsible for the trash on city property that sits next to the building. Could you imagine if the city of Seattle did that? I mean, <laughs> I, I, I shot a video on uh, Target closing down two stores here in Seattle. I showed a pile of trash with, I think they had some needles in it, which is just standard stuff. If, if, if the city of Seattle was to hand out tickets for garbage, they'd be handing them out all day long because it's all over. Wherever you got a homeless encampment, it is just garbage out of control. Yeah. That's because how this, that's how that ecosystem works, right? It pretty much was that we have 30 days to clean up all the trash and debris left by the homeless camps in the alleyway. We will not be paying anything related to that, said Morris. I hope you don't. I hope you don't. But there's also going to be that push comes to shove. All right, we're doubling your fine whatever it might be. And then also just having to look at that stuff, right? Just having to, you know, go out your back to your dumpster, whatever. And you're looking at that stuff. You're like, it looks like that garbage has been there for quite a while. So there was some kind of encampment sweep that happened, but not all the garbage got picked up or the campers, the urban campers migrated elsewhere and um, just left their crap behind as they do. Morris says she's been waiting for the city to take action for years, but never thought the city would make the company responsible for the issue. You know, it's, that's some hazardous stuff you got to pick up. I talk about here in Seattle, Andrea Suarez from We Heart Seattle. She just passed a million pounds of garbage that her nonprofit voluntary run organization has picked up from homeless encampments here in Seattle, a million pounds that have been picked up. And, you know, as, as recently as a couple of years ago, the city of Seattle was saying, nope, don't appreciate what you're doing. You're not sanctioned. You're going closer than 20 feet to these people's tents. You're invading their privacy. You're throwing away some good stuff there. You're throwing away people's personal belongings. So you're not hearing that at all here, you know, <laughs> and the garbage that is here in this OK City environment could probably be picked up in an afternoon. The stuff that Andrea Suarez and her crew deals with, man, you see some of the time lapses that they do. Thousands, tens of thousands of pounds of garbage picked up. So it's not just unique to Seattle, Portland, San Fran, LA. It's OK City too. But OK City is taking the next step, which is, yeah, we're going to need you, Mr. and Mrs. Business Owner, to pick up that garbage for us because it's illegal to have it out there. Yeah, no can do. 
The struggle is real. Even on Tuesday, the trash includes nothing related to sign making business. I think we, I think we established that. One of the photos that I sent you was a group of people that had about 16 bikes, propane cans, and then tents and debris. Bikes are currency in the homeless encampments. Yeah, they're like money. Oklahoma City Homeless Alliance, sitting just two blocks away from J&B Graphics, provided KFOR with the following statement from ED, Erectile Dysfunction, and founder Dan Strowan. No, that's not. That ED doesn't stand for that. I don't know what it stands from, but whatever. All right. And this is where they get into oftentimes people experiencing homelessness or given single use, single serving, fight club, disposable items, disposable items, which generates more trash. And then they're not always trash cans conveniently located. Okay. But this, this, this wasn't just food containers. This was not styrofoam food containers. And guess what? I've got a, um, Salvation Army that hands out food near my home. I'm guessing three quarters of a mile away. They hand out single serving containers and those folks, I never see it around, right? So you can control it. You just got to emphasize, hey, if you're going to get the free food, put it in the garbage. Otherwise, people are going to be pissed. And then some jackass from Seattle is going to do a podcast making us not look that great. It's just what we're doing. This is 2023. Morris is just wondering why they've been deemed responsible for the mess. Well, because it's it's there. It's adjacent to your business and you're getting tagged for it, right? I mean… It's pretty much falling on deaf ears. It's not good. We're not getting anywhere. And it's very frustrating for us, said Morris. So development services issued the ticket. That's the entity within the city of Oklahoma. (laughs) The city empathizes with the property owner, but landowners are responsible when illegal dumping takes place on their property. Again, I go with, could you imagine any of those things happening here in Seattle or Portland? Where would you start? Yeah gotten so wildly out of control that there's no place to start. So you know what? From the standpoint of not letting it get out of control, I get it. The city's going to be on top of it. Hey, you got a mess there. Clean that up. But it's not really the business owner's responsibility, right? They're just trying to get by. So who's going to take care of it? There should be some outreach program from the city, right? But you don't have enough homeless you know, population to probably warrant a full dedicated crew. I'm totally guessing. I don't know. I don't know the mechanics. Maybe on my Thanksgiving trip, I'll find out some of that. But, you know, we have just entire crews that come out with, you know, garbage trucks, dump trucks, backhoes, graders, you name it, because that's the kind of restoration it takes to put back a homeless encampment. How about Echo Park down in LA when they cleaned that up after the pandemic? You know, rats, thousands of rats just running everywhere because they were underneath all the encampment tents that had been sitting there for literally years during the pandemic when the CDC said, hey, don't sweep the encampments because you might spread the Rona around. And so all these homeless encampments just, you know, proliferated. And then that's how you have rats running underneath and create their own tunnels and pull out the tents. You're like, ah, it's a rat festival. Crazy stuff, right? But everybody's like, you know, just let the homeless do their thing. They're fine. Well, Oklahoma City is saying, no, garbage is not fine. Somebody's going to deal with it. Will it be the business owner? Will it be? Maybe it's maybe the maybe the services should go down and clean it up. Right. If you're the reason the homeless community is there because you're handing out free food a couple of blocks away. How about if that's your big thing? If that's your big deal, go down and clean up some garbage. Have the city bring in a dumpster. I don't know. It's not that hard. You don't have that much garbage. Yeah. All right. I don't know. I'm going to go down and see it. I'm going to go down and take a looky-see. That's it for me. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks so much for supporting. I'll catch up with you in the next one. Bye for now.